This is Alabama Politics with Steve Blowers, an in-depth interview with Alabama's top political newsmakers. Now, from the studios of Troy University, here is Steve Flowers. I'm Steve Flowers, and welcome to Alabama Politics. Folks, we're fortunate tonight to have one of my good friends and one of the good guys in Alabama politics, Alabama Agriculture Commissioner John McMillan. John, good to have you on the show. Good to be here, Steve. Thanks for meeting. Well, John's a good regular on our show, y'all. He uh, is commissioner of the largest industry in Alabama, has been, and uh, continues to be Alabama's most important industry is agriculture. John has uh, been around politics a long time. He first ran for legislature in around 74. That's right. 74 from Baldwin County and uh, was elected. And then right in the middle of his second term, I believe, after 78, uh, Fob James made him commissioner of conservation uh, for several years. And he was conservation director of the state of Alabama. And uh, then... Uh, Went back into private business, didn't you? Went to the Forestry, forestry Association, Association from there, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and stayed at Forestry for about 15 years. 23 years. 23 <laughs> years. And then six years ago was elected overwhelmingly Agriculture Commission in a real real crowded field, in a very illustrious, illustrious field of candidates who ran for Agriculture Commission that first time in 2010. And I've said this numerous times on this show and in my columns that uh, – John McMillan was just perfect, had the perfect resume for that job. Uh, a lot of times folks will run for jobs just to be getting a stepping stone, run for governor or something like that. And, but if you put John McMillan's resume into a computer and in the merit system over there, they'd say, okay, he's the best qualified to be agriculture commissioner. <laughs> this guy, if it had been a bureaucratic merit system job, John would have gotten it. Uh, he and his wife were outstanding people and comes from an outstanding family down there in Baldwin County and his roots are deep in Baldwin County. Uh, his family was in the forestry business for a long time. He grew up in the forestry business down around Baby Net and uh, his brother Steve followed him to the house after he left that house seat and he's been in that seat for 36 years. Yeah. 38 to be exact. That, that's right because he had a partial term. I wrote a column this week about my friends who'd been there a long time with me uh, I went to the house in 82, and old Victor Gaston was in my uh -huh. class. And uh, it was Victor and Richard Lindsay, and um, let's see, John Rogers from Birmingham was in that class, still there. But prior to us getting there, uh, your brother Steve and uh, Ron Johnson and old Busky from Mobile, yeah. who I call Admiral, and Alvin Holmes was Alvin there. Alvin Holmes, Alvin's you know, got the record. Alvin's been there 40 years yeah, now. I think he went the same time I first I think went. he did, too. Yeah. He came in 74. Mm -hmm. And uh, But uh, there's, there's still been around a while, but uh, you've had a great career so far in politics in Alabama. Now, I wouldn't call you a politician. You've been, you've been a statesman and done a good job. I always find it interesting that, that you, uh, you uh, your family was in the, in the timber business, but you went off, you must have been smart in high school, you went off to Memphis to Southwestern uh, University, which is now Rhodes College. It used to be South, right. was it Southwestern when you went It there? was Southwestern at Memphis when I went. People don't realize yeah. what a strong academic school that is. It's a very good school. I was very fortunate to uh, be able to get a degree from there. What made you want to go off to, the, to that school when you were a little bo your high school boy? Uh, well, it's pretty interesting, actually. Uh, we are Presbyterian, and yeah. there were group of us, several of us, and I think maybe even 14 uh, number of students from down that way that were active in Presbyterian Church youth work that just kind of all decided that's where we'd like to go. So, so it's through your church. It was a Presbyterian yeah, school. Right. I knew it was Presbyterian school. Yeah. And my oh. father had served on the board up there as well. Oh, had he? Yeah. Had he gone to school there too? No, he was an Auburn graduate. Uh-huh. Well, now, there's just you and Steve, are y'all only two in your We own? have a younger brother that's uh -huh. uh, Are y'all twins? Forrester. We're twins, Steve. I'd forgotten I. about yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right, y'all twins. Uh, you know, uh, John, what I find also, and I talk about this every time you're on the show, you know, growing up in Alabama, you, hear, you, know, you learn a lot about the state. And we were taught in Alabama history when I was a little boy that, that Baldwin County was a potato growing county. It was. It was the biggest yeah. potato growing county in the country, one of them. 
And you told me one time that y'all actually got out of school to pick those potatoes when you yeah, were Yeah, school uh, started and ended on a schedule to uh, have us there available to work on the potato sheds. I always laugh and say that the uh, football coaches had a deal with the uh, potato farmers. <laughs> but did you play football in high school? I did. At Bay Manette? Yeah. yeah. But now you're from Stockton. That's right. Now we how went far to high school in Bay Manette. It's about 10 miles north of Bay Manette. Is Bay Manette still, it's not the biggest town, in Fairhope's the biggest town. Fairhope, uh, yeah, Fairhope is. Because of the growth of. Uh, Eastern Show. Uh, Eastern yeah. Show over there. You know, I had old Bradley Byrne on this show one time, and, and a couple of times he was um, running for governor and everything, and, and he's got deep roots in Baldwin County. His folks settled over yeah. there on that eastern shore. Yeah, Baldwin County, he's, we both like six generations down there. That's what I'm thinking. He, he went back to, God, I, I guess y'all's ancestors came from England, didn't they? Well, y'all British. I was came from uh, Ireland, uh, 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 Scotland, uh -huh, and Scotland. the Carolinas. Well, Byrne would have too. I think that's right. Well, mine did too, John. That's funny. I think 80% of the people in Alabama can trace their roots back to Scotland and Ireland. Mm -hmm. My mama's people came uh, from the Carolinas down to Pike County about 1837 and settled in northern Pike County around the Montgomery County line. They were Grants, but they were Scotch-Irish. If you study Alabama history, but I always thought those Baldwin County folks had maybe come in uh, through Mobile, but your folks came down through Carolina. Came, too. Yeah, came out the first. Uh -huh. In fact, the first I think maybe there were two brothers, but one of them was a preacher named John McMillan, uh -huh. and he wound up in North, Robeson County, North Carolina, and then I think one or two of his children made it down to Monroe County, and then some of them made it down to Baldwin County. So that's the McMillans in Monroe County. Yeah, uh -huh. Uh -huh. old Scotland uh, area in, in uh, Monroe County. Uh -huh. a long time. In fact. Uh, they brought a church bell with them, and it wound up coming from that Presbyterian church in Old Scotland down to our church in Stockton today. You still go to that church sometimes? I Stockton? do when I'm down there, but since mother died, I don't get down there nearly as much as we used to. Do you y'all y'all live here in Montgomery, don't you? We do. Uh -huh. Yeah, just about. We have. Because you've been with the forestry when you were with forestry, you lived here. So it wasn't you had yeah. to move when you became agriculture commissioner? Uh, no, we were. Uh huh. Y'all really, are living here, yeah. Yeah. Uh, John, uh, let me ask you this question. Talking about uh, agriculture, I may have asked this in the past. I saw I missed the tomatoes. Y'all have a big tomato thing every every year. I just it's I a lot I of fun. We had a great crowd. Hope you can make it next I'm year. I'm gonna plan to. Y'all got me on the calendar. Oh yeah. Yes, and them invite. Make sure <laughs> I'm invited. But uh, I'm gonna be sure and come next year. But what I was gonna ask you is, uh, tell me if you can, the order the top five crops are producing agricultural entities, if you will. Poultry is number one, isn't it? Poultry is, is the largest of the commodities, yes, by, by a substantial margin, actually, and still growing and has room to grow. But you know, when a long time ago, when it first started building in Alabama, most of it was in North Alabama. That's not mm -hmm. the case anymore, is it? Uh, it's still heavy in North Alabama. Coleman had but, a lot of but, Yeah, uh -huh. Coleman and uh, I think DeKalb County is actually the largest poultry county, but all of those counties up north Alabama are pretty big. And then we've got, in southeast Alabama, we've got uh, some big poultry operations down there as well. And and that's where I think we have the opportunity to grow in southwest Alabama mm -hmm. with poultry. I was over in Grove Hill the other day. I was in uh You Washington, got a relative Washington over there. In Clark County, Let me yeah. tell you, I had a lady, I, I went over for a book sign at the, at the Grove Hill uh, uh, thing, it had a, bit, a bit nice thing for me and lays house out in, and some lady who writes for the Thomasville Times named Linda Weiss. Oh, that's my wife's cousin. Yeah, she yeah. said. It's Catherine's cousin. Yeah, I said Catherine's cousin. Mm -hmm. She said, wrote me a little note and said she was your cousin. Alabama's a big front porch. It is. You know, it sure is. We all know each other. I can tell, you know, and they want to tie you to somebody. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Remember that's... the first time you ran for legislature? They tie you to your ancestors. Oh yeah, yeah. Now whose boy are you? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they, Baldwin County was is now a big county. It's one of the big. If you're gonna run statewide in a Republican primary, you about got to start in Baldwin and Shelby over, County. Over two hundred thousand in Baldwin County. Isn't that something? Yeah, when you were up, it wasn't about forty or fifty, was it? If that many. Probably about right. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, and then people realize how many towns, how big that county is geographically, though. Yeah, that's huge. You got ball. You got. Uh, um, Fairhope, Foley, uh, all those papers over there. Yeah, Spanish I mean, Fort, Daphne. Uh huh. I mean, everyone's Fort paper. Clear. I mean, Baymanette, uh, Fairhope, uh, Foley. 
uh, Gulf Shores. I'm in the Gulf Shores Islander. Mm -hmm. Every one of those papers down there. I got a good readership in the real Bay Minette paper. I think one of the interesting things about Baldwin County geographically is that I-10 almost splits the agribusiness part of it from the timber part of it. Is that what's timber? Almost. Oh, where you're from timber. over there? Uh, yeah, the northern part of the county is still predominantly timber. And of course, uh, some of those farmers that back uh, when I, long about the time I was elected to the legislature were worried about how they were going to pay the property taxes and now they're worried about whether they ought to be farmers or sell that land for development. You know, you know old Ricky Rhodes. Oh yeah. He may have been, Ricky was yeah. one of my fraternity brothers in Alabama. He and Doty were fraternity brothers of mine. And, and you remember that movie Animal House? Yeah. You know, uh, they all we all sat aside, and Ricky Rhodes gave me the nickname Tree. And doggone my nick, that stuck with me. If I go to the Capitol or anywhere I go in the state now, half the people call me Tree. <laughs> you know how, the, you, how you know how they all lined them up and gave me. Oh nickname yeah, yeah, that. the fraternity crowd. And, and Rhodes Ro Ro thought he was gonna be like he's gonna give everybody a nickname. He gave me that nickname. Mine stuck. <laughs> tree. <laughs> oh, Heffern used to love to call me Tree. But he pronounced it Trey. <laughs> Trey, what you doing, old Trey? You know, I'm going to tell you something, John, being in agriculture, you realize how good Heffin was for this state. Oh, yeah. He was on the agriculture. He saved the peanut program. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. All, a lot of our commodities and almost all of our groups, like uh, Farmers Federation and Cattlemen's Association, Forestry Association, Poultry Association, he was good to all of us. He, he, he took care of it. And, you know, that's not the greatest committee to be on as far mm -hmm. as raising campaign money or, or you know, agriculture yeah. is not the best one. Armed services is the best one, and banking. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> old Shelby got on banking when he first got to the Senate. He said, I have so much money, they will beat me now. <laughs> you know he does. got that right, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> you know does. He said, the first thing he said, he said, I got on armed services and banking. I'll raise so much money, they will beat me. <laughs> you know, and old Heffern got on judiciary and agriculture <laughs> to take care of the state, you yeah. know. and. Uh, Anyway, uh, and Shelby has too, but I'm saying I loved old Heffern. You know, talking about old timey uh, politicians, I'll tell you this funny story about Baldwin County. I, I don't know if I've told you or not. Old Baxley, Bill Baxley, mm -hmm. told me this story about himself. You know, Baxley was a genius. He, he has a genius IQ. Oh, he's got a great man. Well, he's got a photographic memory. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that. Ba Baxley, I watched him over in that Hubbard trial. Uh, he, he, he still got it. He's one top five. Uh, criminal defense lawyers in the state, oh, yeah. but he uh, he great lawyer. He grew up in that courtroom down in Dothan with his daddy, Keena Baxter, was circuit judge. And Baxter, his daddy had been DA, and Baxter got over graduated. Baxter graduated from Dothan High School at 15 years old, and he graduated from Alabama at 18 or 19. Alabama Law School at 20. He was down there practicing law when he was 21 years old and became a DA in Houston County at 23 years old. And he was 29, he was Attorney General, and the youngest Attorney General in America in the state of history. But that first race, he was campaigning for Attorney General, and Baxley, what, being 20, 28 years old, he wasn't far removed from fraternity life in Alabama. He was a single guy, and so they pulled old Baxley aside. He used to like to drink beer and chase women at 27 years old, you know. And so he, they pulled him aside, now, Baxley, you know, you, you can't be, you know, drinking all the time you're campaigning. You're going to have to, you know, cut that out while you campaigning for attorneys. You know, back and he said, I swore I wouldn't, I did. He said, I didn't take a drink of beer the whole time I was campaigning. I was, boy, I campaigned for six months and about two or three days before election, I got to a honky-tonk down around Bay Manette, Baldwin County. You may know where it is. He said it was the biggest, biggest country bar I ever seen in my life. And I got in there with those old boys and I had the best time. I got drunk as Cooter Brown. It might have been Summerdale Supper Club. That I think it was. That's there. exactly <laughs> where it was. It was Summerdale. That's exactly, John. Yeah. You nailed it. See, I knew you'd know that. It was you know, popular. That's where Baxi wound up. It was three or four days before election. And he beat McDonald Gallion by a thin margin. McDonald Gallion been turned in a long time. And, and Baxi, as you, as you will do as a commissioner of agriculture running statewide, anybody will, you get perusing the vote totals of, of the counties, you know, and see how you did in each county. You do that, you know. Oh, yeah. By the way, you got the most votes of any constitutional office last time in 14. Yeah, I believe that's right. Uh, but old Baxter got to studying those boxes, got to looking at Baldwin County, and sure enough, he got about the same number of votes in Baldwin County he got statewide, except for one box. That Somerdale box got 84% of the vote. <laughs> 
said, I should have been drinking beer well, the whole time. <laughs> listen, that was a good, as you know, Baldwin County's got those ethnic uh, roots still heavy in parts of the county. So the Summerdale Supper Club was not only a good place to have a beer, but they had great steaks and food there, too. Uh, that's what Bass wound up. A guy named Hootie Green ran uh -huh. it. And uh, it's, the building's not even there now, but uh, yeah, I'm, I've been there and had to, Mostly to eat steak. <laughs> John, back to agriculture. After poultry, what would be second? Uh, cattle would probably be second as cattle. far as the livestock part of it. But then cotton, corn, soybeans uh, all. And then, and then peanuts uh, have really grown to be a statewide crop. Now, That's what I was going to People think about the traditional wild grass, but mm -hmm. we really have peanuts all over the whole state now. What other areas have started growing peanuts? You had to grow them in the black Literally yard, every, everywhere, yeah. Not, not, you know, there's just not that much row crop right in the black belt, but uh, on up in Pickens County and all the way up the northwest side of the state, they're well, growing You know, peanuts. if you look at a topographical map of the state, though, I always thought that it was because of uh, the soil in the wiregrass was the reason the peanuts were grown there. But that not, must not be necessarily the case. It just happened to get a niche there. Yeah, and I think it had to do with prior farm bills where the, you know, you, okay. you got subsidies for, for what you had, the land you had in peanuts. That's what it was it then. Kind of kept it. It wasn't so much the, the soil, it was the... It right. was, it was the, the and, and then, of course, now I'm, I'm not an expert on this, but I know the genetics have changed as well. You know, there's been a lot of, uh -huh. a lot of work on genetics. In fact, uh, there's been a lot of work in, in uh, recent years. It's kind of taken a back seat now because of oil prices, but there's been a lot of work for developing peanuts that would be heavily f used for bioenergy and that sort of thing. Are they, uh, what, what is the black belt soil being used for mostly now? Well, primarily, a lot of it is just cattle pasture land. Montgomery and, and turned that way for land. years. Montgomery yeah. County was the biggest, one of the biggest cattle yeah. places in the state. But the the, uh, the agriculture folks tell me they can grow anything. There. The irrigation is a is an issue. You got to be, you got to be sure that that soil, you know, it changes if it gets real dry or real wet. So uh -huh. uh, the uh, the capability to to take advantage of our water resources is important over there. And that's where I think we've got a great opportunity with with uh, young and beginning farmers is in that. Uh, Black Belt area of the state because with tunnel houses, greenhouses, hydroponics, and those kind of things on a relatively small tract of land with irrigation, you can be very successful at growing produce. John, you had said once before, that, and this shocked me, I think it may be in Baldwin County, not Baldwin, but Mobile County, that uh, landscape. Uh, or what do you call it? Yeah, green, it, we call it the green industry. Yeah, yeah. It is is really the most growth industry? Is it it's, not one of the one biggest? of the fastest growing, if not the fastest growing sector of agribusiness in the state? Around urban areas, primarily. Uh, a lot of it, but we also got a lot of turf uh, farms in, in especially in Baldwin County. But the one of the really interesting things is that the uh, farmer that furnishes the turf for the Super Bowl and for some of the larger College and pro stadiums is right there near Foley in Baldwin uh -huh. County. It's fascinating to watch how he develops that uh, football side. Huh. John, I was going to ask you now, tell, tell our viewers and take your time with it, uh, about you were one of the first ones to, to branch out and go to Cuba. And uh, you've recently been on a, on a trip to Cuba earlier this year, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell our viewers about how Alabama can tie with that opening of Cuba and what you've been doing and that, your trip and everything. Okay. Can I go we, that? we were, we had, uh, back when we had the threat for avian flu uh, in all over the eastern United States, and, and thank goodness we never had any issues in Alabama, but that was like last July, and we had some little hiccups with Cuba because they were, they, they, uh, Buy five to ten thousand tons a month of poultry shipped out of the port in Mobile. So it's mighty important. Mostly Alabama poultry. A lot of it, yeah. It's uh -huh. no way you know with the big companies. Some of it's from Georgia. Yeah. Montana, but but heavily, we know for sure from Alabama growers. So <clears throat> some of our folks, I was not able to go, but some of our folks went to, uh, including the. Auburn poultry science folks and the poultry and egg folks and uh, Daniel Archer, our chief of staff, went to Washington and then to Havana, meeting with the uh, with the Cubans about that issue and resolved it to their satisfaction and they picked up. So I wanted to go back to uh, 
to follow up on that and be, you know, solidify however we could that relationship. So we had a really good trip down there. I believe it was in February. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was interesting. We were there in conjunction with a large agricultural fair that they have. Had countries from all of Central America and a lot of South American countries with livestock and just some of the most beautiful horses and purebred cattle you'd ever see. So we really enjoyed that. Uh, we, uh, we spent about five days down there. We went out and toured uh, just on our own and toured uh, farms in the rural parts of the, you know, like 100 miles of, uh, east of uh, Havana. Just drove out one Sunday afternoon and visited with tobacco growers and mangoes are a really strong crop. They've got beautiful fruits and vegetables down there and we hope to grow this interest into something that will be productive in bringing some of those fruits and vegetables into Mobile. John, uh, was it like a, like several state agriculture commissioners or just Alabama? No, that was good. We, uh, the the uh, lady that handles international uh, business with the uh, poet in Mobile, Maria Mendez, was with us and she's actually was born and raised in uh, Cuba till she was a small child. So she's, of course, extremely fluent in uh, and actually has a Cuban passport, so she was she was with us almost all the time, and that was a huge asset to have somebody like that uh, with us. There were six of us, and there was a lady from Georgia that works and buys a lot of export lumber from Alabama and Georgia and other southeastern states. So it was a very productive trip, and we're still following up on some of the uh, opportunities that we think we identified while we were there. What's their biggest? Uh but do they want to export things to Alabama, like fruits and vegetables? They do. Uh, the embargo, we really need to lift that embargo or, or at least much more than it is. Now, let me, I think your viewers would be interested in the background of that situation. Uh, Sixty years ago or so, our Congress, when all of that business was going on with the missile crisis and all that, passed legislation that really just cut off trade totally with Cuba. 2000, 2001, they had a, a really bad hurricane. So Congress relaxed the embargo on medical supplies and forest products and food sources so that we could help them recover from that terrible hurricane. But they never did go back and change it. So for all these years uh, since then, we have been able to do business with them. And in our case, it's been predominantly with poultry. And then when, when they do have some uh, bad weather, we're able to sell some utility poles and some other products down there as well. What, do we have uh, a, a company that, that make utility poles in Alabama? We do, we still do, yes, in, in uh, South Alabama, and in Scamby and Baldwin and, mm -hmm. that, and some in Clark uh, as well. What would be the biggest uh, cash crop through that area north of Birmingham around Cullman? I wouldn't call it Sand Mountain, but in between the Sand, well, including Sand Mountain and yeah. and the Coleman, Morgan, up that 65 corridor, that's not that's really what do you what would you call the Coleman Morgan? That's not Tennessee Valley, is it? Morgan no, would be, part be further of north. Yeah, Morgan would, but uh -huh. but all of those, all of that area, that central northern part of the state there is all real heavy poultry. Do, still uh, dominant poultry. And processors too, and that's significant. We, we toured a, a poultry processing plant up that way recently with our board of ag and industries, and they process in that particular plant about 140 birds a minute. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this question now. Since most of my viewers are in the uh, Montgomery, Otago, Elmore, Pike, Crenshaw, Butler, Dale County area, which encompasses the river region and a little bit of the quasi wiregrass. What would be the biggest input or effect agriculture has on the river region, for example, would you say? Uh, if, you, if you include the, the wiregrass area in southeast Alabama, it would, it would probably still be peanuts, although we have a lot of corn and, and soybeans and other crops, and they alternate with peanuts too. But I tell you one thing that's really exciting that's happening is the food processing. Uh, company that's under construction in Brundage, and I think that's going to be a great opportunity for our farmers, especially the closer they are because of transportation, to be able to grow cucumbers and produce that will be utilized in that new company, which should be getting pretty close to ready to go. Yeah, it is. 
Uh, what about Montgomery County? What would be the biggest agricultural effect on Montgomery County, would you think? Well, I, I would, I'm not absolutely positive, but I would guess cattle would still be, still be number very one. strong in Montgomery. But we still have uh, corn, cotton, and soybeans around. Have you, you know, I, I was talking to old Matt McCarthy the other day, and that new little place, Sweet Creek Corn, yeah. there on too. Oh, Reed Ingram, the representative owns yes, that. Yes, sir. Right? He's, that's, a, and I think Reed's doing a lot of good business there. They too. say he's got the best food and the best uh, uh, produce there. Yeah, I've been a real couple fresh, times. Re good, real fresh. Got a really good deli. And see, it'll, yeah. it'll attract all those people from Pike Road. He's got a great location with the t traffic on 231 uh -huh. and the Pike Road traffic. Uh huh. And he and his wife Karen are working really hard down there. He's a hard working guy. He's a, I've tried to get him on this show a couple times, but he's had his schedule during the legislative session. And he sells a bunch of cars too. Yeah. And that's what he primarily does. Yeah, he's still got the car business, and uh -huh. his son is in that business as well. But uh -huh. Karen says she's loving the uh, produce business and the farmer's market uh, business out there too. John, you met, well, did you ever go page when you were a little boy up in the legislature? You know, I never did. The first time I ever came to Montgomery, uh, to see the legislature, I was a county commissioner in Baldwin County. You were already a county commissioner? Yeah. You were young then, wasn't you? Yeah, I was. Yeah. What area did you have? Uh, we always, in Baldwin County, we qualified by geographic districts, but ran county Brown wide. County wide. Yeah. You know, there was a powerful state senator named Dick Owen down there. Yes, sir. Served what, with him. Did, did you, st he was he still in the yes, legislature? Yes, sir. He was chairman of F&T I, I knew was he was. And freshman. So he was still there when you were freshman. He was. That was his last term. Had you known him growing up? Oh yeah. He's he was, from Baymanette. Yeah, wasn't he? he had a hardware store there in Baymanette, which his son still operates. Uh, I was wondering what business they were in. Yeah, he did a great job. It was a family business. Third, I think Dick was at least the second generation, and and young Dick, uh, his son, practices law next door, and and uh, also continues to run the hardware business. Right there in Baymanette. Right on the courthouse square. Is that right? And they got a great store there too. He really has expanded his products and he has just about anything you want. This is Dick's son. Yeah. Is he named yeah. for him? Yeah, he's uh, Dick too. He's I guess he may be the third. I'm not sure. In that in that fun about Alabama being a front porch, you grew up knowing old Dick Owen and then you yeah. got to serve with him. Yeah, and boy I can tell you as a little freshman, it was a great advantage having a guy like him as my mentor and uh, also when I when I needed something from some of these state government agencies I worked with him very closely, let uh -huh. me say. I would say, you know, we got such and such a problem in Baldwin County. Is it all right if I go see so-and-so and, -so and uh, tell them that you and me both want to see something done about this? Chairman of f and helps you a lot. <laughs> Dropping that name was a big help. It helped me in my freshman year. I had George Wallace as a governor. I had <laughs> Barber County. That, that was helpful, too. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, John, our time's up. Folks, our guest tonight has been my good friend and our popular agriculture commissioner, John McMillan who is registered from Baldwin County. He's been agriculture commission for six years now and appreciate him taking time to be on our show and thank you viewers for watching. Hope you're tuning in next week for Alabama Politics. Thank you, John. Always good to be with you. Tree.